Hello everybody, this is Father Mario Quejadas once again from St. Walter Church of the Diocese of Juliet of Il in Illinois here in Roselle, Illinois. We are back with our Monday uh, evenings, Hope is Alive. We are talking again about this book by Bishop Bob Barron, the Eucharist. I'm Janet Tuzzolino. Chase. And my name is Donna Burr. You, you know, there is something that I posted on Facebook this morning that says that it's not your gifts uh, that 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 identifies you uh, because because gifts were given to you for free. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it is your choice in life that identifies you. And and you know, I I am not saying here that everybody should go to communion. I'm not saying that. But it's your choice. You know, if you want to be at ta table fellowship with Jesus and He is inviting you, then you have to acknowledge within yourself that, Lord, I am hungry for you. I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sin. I hunger for you. I, I want to do this right. Mm -hmm. You know, because I hunger for you. I am desperate for you, as the word, that word that we were talking about, you know, in our first session with the guys. Desperate for you. When you are desperate for food, you know, you present yourself as hungry for that food, famished for that food, needing that food. You don't come and say, I don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't come like that. I you mean, go to a restaurant, uh, pick up the menu and say, no, I'm not going to order. <laughs> I'm not going to order. <laughs> or you go to a wedding party and you sulk in that corner. I just want to eat by myself. <laughs> You know, right. uh, you, you know the, the banquet is there. Enjoy it. <laughs> feel, um, but feel loved and feel forgiveness. You know, in the next chapter, they're going to talk about where, you, where um, our sins are actually forgiven at that altar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, did you remember that part? And it's something I don't think about. I don't come to... The altar for forgiveness I just come to receive mm -hmm. but the other mm -hmm. pieces you know a lot of Catholics don't think uh, that uh, they think that uh, a lot of people think that the number one sacrament for forgiveness and mercy uh, for a lot of Catholics is the confessional it is not the number one sacrament for reconciliation for healing for grace for mercy for forgiveness is the Eucharist. And I, I just love that piece. The Eucharist. Mm -hmm. That I come here to be forgiven. You know, not to merit it. <laughs> but to receive. That's why I, I, I love it when people come for communion to receive. Did you, did you see it? You know, you have to receive. You don't take. Mm -hmm. You don't take. There, there is something not beautiful about taking. Right. And there is something beautiful about receiving. You know, isn't that something when, when we switched to receiving in our hand, and I'm old enough to know when that happened, <laughs> um, that, that beautiful symbol of our hands being... Reaching, reaching out. out, exactly, reaching, reaching out, out, out to receive. I think that's just a beautiful symbol of what, what you were just saying, Father, that we want, come to me, come to me, Lord, I'm here, I'm hungry, and I, I want it. <laughs> yes, I want it. I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, but you are not. This is what happened at the Garden of Eden. <laughs> we tried to <laughs> to get it by ourselves. You know, thinking that by getting it ourselves, we're gonna be better than God. Huh? Instead of receiving it, because it's grace, it is given, it's free. You know, you 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 don't take water. Water comes to you. <laughs> and when we come to receive, nobody says, nope, sorry, you can't have it. It's always coming. You're always there. It's always, you're always having that ability to receive it when you make your way. How sad it is to think of those countries where they can't receive um, like we do. You know, constant, you know they, they don't have Mass every week, um, and they can't receive communion only up couple times a year or whatever, you know, pray for those people that's just, we're so blessed that we are able to come whenever, you know, that's not everybody can do that, no. And I think we all experienced it too, 
um, during the pandemic with yes. being in a virtual setting and attending mass Absolutely. virtually, but receiving spiritually, mm -hmm. but not actually physically right. being a part of that. Right. And there was almost like this feel of longing to be a part of that reception as well. Actually, at the beginning, um, we, when we were going uh, virtually to uh, Mass and, and you would be looking right at the altar and because of our live streaming, you know, yes. we'd be showing the altar. I was like, this is so beautiful. I'm actually seeing the miracle. I'm witnessing. I'm right here looking at the miracle. But then you start longing for the actual receiving <laughs> of Jesus. <laughs> like, okay, well, that, that was nice for a while. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, right. You, you know, the, the, there is something here that I underlined three times. <laughs> <laughs> that must be important. <laughs> Page 34. 34. At, 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 at the very beginning, therefore, games of ambition and claims of social superiority <clears throat> are inimical to the community that finds its point of orientation around the table of Jesus' body and blood. And this is why Jesus responded so promptly and ambiguously to the disciples' childish preoccupations. And he said that the kings, of, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become the youngest and the leader like one who serves. I think uh, that this, 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 this was uh, taken upon because, you know, there, there was these brothers that are saying, Lord, who among us will sit at your right and at your left? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> You're sitting at my table. <laughs> what else do you need? Right. Who will be the most important, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not important. It's important that you It here. is not. Mm -hmm. It is not. You know, I've always told couples that, that, uh, that, that, that I'm preparing for uh, their marriages that the church... Is, 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 is not obsessed about equality. The church is obsessed about complementarity. Equality says power. Who is above somebody else? Mm. What rights and duties do we have? Complementarity says, how can I serve you? How can I serve you? You, you know, when, when, when our parents prepare for our meals when we are kids, they don't say who's more powerful than, you know. It's, it's like, oh, have you eaten? Eat more. Or how come you're not eating? Don't you like this? You know, it's, it's how can I serve you mentality. So whenever you talk about your mom saying that to you, uh, <laughs> no, I really, I think about uh, not so much that she's serving you, but her caring. She wants to make sure you are fed, that you are healthy, that you are taking care of yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think that's part of it. You know, we want to serve or we want to care for others. That's what it's about. I agree. It's funny when you made that comment because anyone who knows my mom, knows the, first, <laughs> the first thing she says to any of her kids is, what did you eat today? You know, <laughs> what did you have? And it's that whole idea of, I want to know that you're okay. I want to know that you're feeding your body so that you can be healthy and you could be there for others as well. And I think when, when we're talking here that um, yeah, Jesus wants to feed us and it might be physically, but it is in receiving him. But it's also once we do that, he's feeding us so that we can share what we have with yes. others. It's yes. feeding us with that love, that unconditional love that never stops. Mm -hmm. And that's why center, everything is so centered around food throughout Old Testament, New Testament. You know, it's all centered around meals, mm -hmm. not food, but meals together and sharing because um, that's bringing us to the Eucharist. The meal, he said, always conduces you to the mission. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, as you have been graced, you want to give that grace also to other people. Uh, like, you know, I, I, I always say this, that, 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 that people, people who forgive much are the people that have forgiven, that have forgiven a lot. Pe people that are very generous, it's because they have received that generosity from some others and some way, somehow, want 
to share that generosity mm -hmm. to other people. Because they have felt it. They, they have felt it. it. Mm -hmm. yes. You want to pay it forward because of your experiences. Yeah. I had a great experience. That felt good. I'd like someone else to experience it. Yeah. And the same is true to think too opposite wide. You know, hurt people hurt people. Mm. It's so yeah. true, you know. And 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 you, you know there was there was the saying that uh, what if I get it right, you know, uh, I'm senior moments. That 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 uh, that uh, you don't you really don't know what the other person is struggling with today mm. or battling with today. That's yes. why kindness is very, very much needed. Very much so. Very much needed. Go back to your Matthew example. I mean, why is everybody just as important? Um, because we don't know everybody's story. In your homily the other day, where um, Jesus is in our stories, everybody has something, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why we need to be um, considerate and loving towards everybody, everyone, because we don't know. We don't know what's going on in their homes or in their hearts or in their health or whatever. Mm -hmm. And many times those people who are hurting the most tend to hide it the most, yes. too. Yes, for sure. Pretend. Pretend to help it go away, but once they allow themselves to I, receive. In, in our family, my mom, I think it's an Italian thing, but if you, maybe you understand this, if you ignore it, it'll go away, okay? So don't pay too much attention to that problem, it'll go away. <laughs> so, and that's true, we need to be sensitive, right? Yeah. Yes, uh, that's why table fellowship is so important, not only here at Sunday Eucharist, but also in our daily lives, in our lives as families, especially, in our lives as families. You know, e e even though, that's, that's why I, I don't like it when, when families are all on their uh, cell phones mm. while they're eating, or while, you know, watching TV while they were eating. That's not good, by the way. That means that what's happening here is not important. And it's not <laughs> necessary to be at a table together. Yes. Right, right. Because the table is for sharing. Or think about how we've grown in our society of everybody's doing all the time and they're busy. And nowadays, even when you think about like a lunch meal, how many people are actually, well, I'm going to eat quickly while I'm doing my work instead of, well, maybe I might have the opportunity to stop slow down a little bit and enjoy the people around me because not only are you slowing down, you're building that community. You're getting to know somebody you're building else. That community. Which is more important. It's more important. Work. I know I'm guilty of it. I was just gonna say you're making me feel guilty. Yeah. No, I was telling you. I didn't remember you school years I was in fashion right here. <laughs> I'm like, I better do that more. <laughs> You know, yeah. I think sometimes we do. We just like let those things go by because we think, oh, if I just rush through this, I could get to that. Instead of thinking sometimes you have to slow down to get more. And what that more is, is maybe like maybe you're, you might have more work to do later on if you're staking that time, but you're feeding your soul yes. by and slowing down. Others. And you're, you're listening feeding. ears for yes. somebody else or your smile or maybe a kind word. Mm -hmm. yes. you, you know that 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 that, uh, that table fellowship, especially with that you know, that slowing down is such a challenge for us right now. Yes, it is. You know, Sunday is a challenge. Because Sunday is another day like any other day for most of our families. It, it's the day to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, instead to just enjoy each other, to have a meal, to come to church. You know, those are all slowing down. And, 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 and what is difficult is that, you know, if studies after studies have shown that, that, that families that have regular meals that is slowing down are much healthier families, what is the other side of that? Mm. Yes. Yes. You know? so yes. Th yes. Does that mean it, it, it is also true that a lot of our teenagers are eating alone? Mm -hmm. Or eating with the people that they don't love? Right. 
uh, eating in front of the TV. Right? In front of the on TV, laptop. on their laptop, yeah. you know, and, and that is sad. It's, it's because we all live in one house and yet, whoa, you know, how come we are allowing this to happen? We need to get back to the okay. basics. Well, you know what? I was just going to say, Father, you just took us back to where we started with the Jewish traditions. Yes. That meal time was meal times and Sunday was sacred. Okay. Sunday was sacred. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that makes a difference in our society today. And I could even say growing up that dinner time was sacred time. It's mm -hmm. not even that long ago. <laughs> you know, it was. We all had to be present. It's even when we were doing our own things, everybody was back and we were sitting together and we were at the table, no TV on anywhere. It was, we're sitting and we're talking. We're sitting and we're talking. Wow, isn't that revolutionary? <laughs> sitting and talking? Can I just text you? <laughs> Can I just Google this instead to ask you? <laughs> but, 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 but look at that, you know, because that's our culture today. And we are not saying let's go back to the past. Mm -hmm. We are saying, you know, that, that, that we need to be proactive to live happier lives mm. and the lord's day that is sunday which you know the 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 greek word the, the latin word is dominus domingo in latin which is the day of the lord and the lord is saying just relax i got this monday to saturday thing <laughs> <laughs> time, time to sit down have a meal have a meal with me i i, I just I just, come to me, all you who are tired and weary. Mm -hmm. Let me give you rest. Let me give you rest. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I was, a, I, I don't know if, if you know this feeling, because I, I, I had this, this meal before in which, you know, I was invited into a house, and throughout the whole evening, one of the people hosting has the phone uh, with notification. Oh. Ding! Mm -hmm. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> After 10 things, I wanted to grab that phone and throw it somewhere. But, you know, I'm a very respectful person. You want to be on I want to be <laughs> Well, okay. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not good food. But, you know, the fellowship was being interrupted. I was saying that's such an interruption. Uh -huh. such an interruption. Uh -huh. Instead of... Instead of our modernity enhancing our life, it seems to me that modernity is being a burden. Mm. You know, uh, and, and the word I think is not balance, because balance for me, for me, it connotes, connotes guilt. Oh, I'm not a balanced person. The, 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 the word I think is priority. Mm -hmm. What's important? Mm -hmm. I'm with my daughter today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm with my best friend today. I'm not with my phone. I choose not to be on my phone. And that's okay. And that's, oh, that's okay? That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. My hands. More than okay. It is. You're so funny. <laughs> You know, because people think, I have to do this, I have to go here. And if I'm not doing it, something's wrong. But we have to tell ourselves it's okay. And, and it's better. Yes. It's better. The, I think that that, that, that that is one of the things that the Eucharist is trying to teach us. That, that Yes, the Eucharist is a source of healing. Why is it a source of healing? Because we go back to the basics of who we are. Mm. And what we need. At the very end of it, we need love. And love cannot be hurried. Love has to be slow. Cooking, talking, having a meal, enjoying each other's company. We cannot enjoy Jesus if we are in a hurry. And I cannot enjoy myself nor my friends and my family if we are in a hurry. With that, we thank you for joining us. And God bless you all. Have a good one.